Hello, I'm Emma Bruner at Discovery Park of America, and this week, Real Foot Forward is made possible by our friends at Final Flight Outfitters, the family-owned outdoor store that has all the apparel and outdoor equipment you need for your next hunting or fishing trip. Visit finalflight.net for more information. Today's guest is Brad Kellum, founder of Buff City Soap. I'm Scott Williams, host of Real Foot Forward, where every single week, we talk about the people, the accomplishments, and the history of our home here in West Tennessee. And I have a very special guest here this week. Brad Kellum um, is the grandfather or the father, I don't know how you'd say that, the founder, the uh, grand poobah of Buff City Soap. I'm really excited. Welcome, Brad. Thank you so much. It's good to be here. First, I have a little confession to make. So, I've, you know, I'm from Memphis, since so I've been following your... Uh, success and the uh, you know the uh, path of your company and and I was at a show recently where they had a booth there and there was a young lady there with samples of the different soap and you know and I said to her you know one of the things I love about this is the name is Bluff City Soap and she said well actually it's not you know and I looked at it and it's actually Buff City Soap yeah yeah uh, so anyway we're going to talk a little bit about that but um, I'm fascinated by the fact that here you were um, you were a medic. Um, you know, driving an ambulance, saving lives, and and tell me a little bit about that, how that chapter in your life ended, and how you ended up um, as the soap king. Um, the transition was uh, the genesis of that is me turning forty. Uh, I I have been in the back of ambulances and riding fire trucks for uh, a decade and a half, in in uh, it, it's a young guy's game. Uh, so when I turned 40, I knew I couldn't k- keep climbing in and out of those fire trucks forever. And, <laughs> and so I actually went to law school in Nashville. Uh, Nashville uh, uh, School of Law, and it was my second year of law school that I used a, a bar of plant-based soap. Uh, and it was so different than any soap I'd ever used. Uh, like my whole life, I used uh, dial, body wash, whatever's on sale. And so when I used that soap, I felt so much different. I thought it made me want to research what I've been using. <laughs> <laughs> so you were curious. You were just naturally curious. Why is this different than the experience I've had before? Yep. Just made me curious. And the more I started, re- I started researching. And historically, soap is made from an animal fat and lye. And, and to this day, that's how the commercial soap is still made that you see in every Kroger, Walmart. Uh, it's it's uh, cow fat. If you look on the back of the boxes, every single one of those boxes, a sodium tallow weight. It's beef tallow. So uh, even today, the, the, the products in the grocery store, the commercial products, they're made from beef fat. And so when, when I discovered that, and I discovered that that's the reason their commercial soaps make you feel so dry, especially when you get out of the shower. Like, think about hotel soap. When you get out of the shower, if you use hotel soap, you feel dry, especially in your shoulders. So I thought if I could figure out a way to make it where you were moisturized, that you didn't have that dry feel and use it plant-based instead of animal fat, that was my goal. Now, had you, were you, so you're, you were a fire, uh, fire, fire, I'm sorry, a medic in, were you in Bartlett at the time? Uh, I worked for the city of Memphis. And okay. so I, I live in Bartlett, but I was, I was stationed all over Memphis. Uh, since I'm a paramedic, when I go to work, sometimes they'll say, hey, there ain't no paramedic downtown. And so they send me uh, everywhere. And so you were, um, uh, working as a medic and had you, I mean, were you into baths or soap or, I mean, was this just a complete uh, new thing for you? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it, it actually was. Uh, it, during my second year of law school, uh, when I used that, I was sort of looking for a way to make some extra money anyway. And I'm na- I'm naturally inquisitive. And so when I discovered that the, the that entire shelf at Kroger it's full of cow fat. I thought somebody should point that out. <laughs> and that and that's how I started pointing that out. So we started making soap in our garage at home. 
And so it took a it took a long time to come up with the right recipe uh, because there's so many different plant oils. There's so many to choose from, and you can combine different plant oils. So the first few months was just Jello messes. Uh, but then we come across a recipe that incorporates uh, three or four different oils that makes your bar lather good, but keeps it hard at the same time. So we got a bar soap that's hard with a, with a creamy moisturizing lather that might last two weeks. Uh, and way bigger, you know, than the bar soap that you get at the, at the Kroger. So um, uh, that, that's how we come up with our recipe. We just trial and error. So Jen um, um, was supportive, I'm sure, of you going off to law school or, you know, you know, and now all of a sudden you've come back and said, hey, you know what, I also let's go out in the garage and mess around with soap. Uh, yeah. was, was she open to, to those, that idea? Well, she kind of looked at me funny at first, you know, and then we started talking about it and she liked the plant-based soap that we were trying to. And uh, so I'm a paramedic. Jen is a, a, a RN, and so she worked in the emergency room. I worked on the ambulance, and so we both have this affinity for medicinal chemistry and making things that help people. Uh, we're aware of the skin conditions that come from being too dry, like psoriasis and eczema and stuff like that. So it made us feel good in a medical sense to try to make something that helped people better. Uh, and so Jim was right aboard. Uh, she and we co-founded Buff City together. And how how did you even know where to start? With I mean, I wouldn't even know what I don't even know what soap is made out of. How did you? What was your journey to start trying to gather all these products together? Well, that's kind of a humorous one. Uh, when we started researching the chemistry of of cold process soap making, we knew we needed uh, plant oils and lie and so we went to home depot and we said we need to buy some lie and a scale and they looked at us like we got two heads and at the time jen and i didn't know that they that, that lie is something used in drug manufacturing and stuff like that and they had stopped uh providing lie lows and uh, uh uh home depot and stuff like that and so finally we went to Ace Hardware and the guy said, you know y'all asking for something they put in crystal meth, right? And we're like, <laughs> we got no idea. <laughs> and, so, and so that was, we had kind of a journey uh, in the beginning, just getting the, uh, the raw materials to make the soap. I actually went down to the Bartlett Police Department. I said, look, I'm just about a lot of lie online. Y'all need to know I ain't making drugs. <laughs> that's amazing and so you guys just i mean did you uh like get a recipe and just start cooking it up and figuring out what worked and what didn't yep we uh we made our first uh wooden mold matter of fact i'll be right back i'll grab it yeah i'd love to see it so uh uh today it, it's got buff city branding on it uh -huh. uh, that's how we pour our, our soap starts from scratch. You know, we start from liquid scratch. So we pour it into the mold uh, and then we cut the bars out. It comes out like a loaf of bread. Uh -huh. In the beginning, we had to systematize that. Now, this is an artisan space. I come from working in the back of an ambulance with government resources. And nothing wrong with, I'm not saying anything bad against the city of Memphis, but government resources just limited everywhere. Right. So you you got to make do with what you got. Right. Uh, and so Jen and I brought a different set of eyes to an artisan process, and we were able to standard standardize and industrialize some of the steps, and that enables us to make uh, soap and uh, a quality soap in uh, quantity. And, and so at some point, you guys decided, this is turning out so well, let's open a store uh -huh. in Bartlett. Yep. And the first, the first one's called Bartlett Soap Company, right? Yeah, I named it the Bartlett Soap Company because I wanted the community to own it. Mm -hmm. uh, we feel like we make our product so it uh, makes other people feel better. And so I wanted, I wanted Bartlett to feel like it's theirs. And uh, so it was December of 2013, 
uh, we had been making soap since the summer of 2013 and attending farmers markets and benefits and stuff like that and selling it. And we had a website, uh, the Bartlett soap company.com and people would order on our website and we would meet them at Kroger, Walmart. We were driving everywhere to meet people who were handing out soap. And so I saw a 600 square foot space beside the bowling alley in Bartlett uh, that was for rent. And we're not from retail. We don't know anything about commercial real estate, but I knew if I sold 52 bars of soap a week, I could pay the rent. <laughs> and so I took a sledgehammer. It was an old tile store. I took a sledgehammer in there in December in the middle of snow, beat the walls out of it, drug it outside, made it open, put some uh, display tables in there, and that's we started selling our soap there. And the people didn't have to meet us, you know, around everywhere. Was it what did you uh, start selling those fifty-two bars of soap right away? Right away, never, never missed a week. <laughs> That's amazing. And, you know, this was this is back when, you know, people were used to buying their bars of soap for a specific price um, at the grocery store. To what do you attribute the fact that suddenly they're willing to go into a store specifically for soap and pay a premium? I tell you what I did. If you look back at the pictures of our original store, I went to Whole Foods. Whole Foods sell plant-based soap. I know the lady that makes their soap lives in Smyrna, Tennessee. She's really nice. I like her soap, but it's expensive. Mm -hmm. So if you go to Whole Foods, their little uh, a bar of plant-based soap, it says $1.98, and in real small words, per ounce. And so when you get to you get this little bar of soap, you get to a, a cash register, it might be nine, 10 bucks, because they charge by the ounce. Well, I'm a working class guy. So I wanted to make a price for working class folks. And so we priced our bars $6 in the beginning. Uh, we felt like that would be affordable. And we wanted to make them bigger than the bars you get, you know, in the box at the grocery store. So we used our quality to overcome it, the 2 or $3 price difference. Uh, our, our quality in the moisturize of your skin and the cleared up dry spots, uh, it kept people coming back. Once they use our soap, they want to go back to the commercial soap. And then what, what about, um, had you, um, I know some of the folks over at uh, Paradigm, had you started working on sort of the branding of the, because I'm thinking the experience was probably part of the appeal as well. Yeah. Had you already started sort of branding yourself yet? You know, I did it in an organic way. I didn't know what I was doing at the time, but from attending the farmer's markets, I knew that I wanted my customer to be able to look across the field and see our moniker and know, hey, that's Buff City. And so I started making our logo the same every single time when we started because I wanted it to be recognizable. And that was sort of an organic branding process that I didn't realize I was doing. Well, I guess it was 2014, Charles Garcia from Paradigm visited our Bartlett store. Uh, and we immediately felt a kindred spirit. I, I, I knew Charles was the right guy for us. And he looked at me and he said, you're on to something here. <laughs> uh, and at the time, I couldn't not afford Charles, but I couldn't afford Charles at the same time. I knew I needed that brand to work, but I knew uh, it was going, we were going to have to grind out uh, the business until we could afford to bring uh, on the right kind of brand. Um, and then, so Jen was a nurse. At some point, did she join the family business? Yeah, right away. I, I was already in law school and Jen was able to, to join and become full time right away so she could man uh, the store in Bartlett. Um, and then you're going to law school. I'm assuming you went to all that work to go to law school. You kind of wanted to be a lawyer at some point, but you never actually, you never, you got so busy with soap, you didn't get to be a lawyer, right? You know, I did spend some time in the public defender's office in Nashville. Yeah, uh, I had the opportunity to clerk for a superior court judge, and then I, I did, I spent some time in the PD's office at two hundred one. 
Oh, good. Uh, yeah, so I worked as a public defender as an intern. Uh, yeah. I did graduate law school, but then my practice is in my business. Uh, yeah. the, the analytical skills, uh, I, I put to work uh, with contracts and decision making and that kind. Yeah. So it gave, I mean, as a medic, you didn't, you weren't exposed to that whole world. So it's really interesting. You're able to apply it here. Yeah. Yeah. So, so somewhere along the way, you decided to change the name of it from the Bartlett Soap Company to, um, did you go to Buff City right away or was it ever Bluff City at all? Oh, I tell you what we did. Our first year in business in 2014 at the brick and more, our first brick and more store, uh, we had a lot of people driving from North Mississippi. I mean, a lot. And every every time they say, you got to put one in North Mississippi, you got to put one in North Mississippi. So our second store, we opened in Olive Branch. Uh, and it was originally the Bartlett Soap Company. That was the sign, and that's how we opened it. But at that time, Charles and I had been working together, and we were working on branding that will have a regional draw. Uh, because even though Olive Branch is only about 30 minutes from Memphis, people would say, why you why is it named Bartlett? Is your name Bartlett? Like they didn't it didn't connect. Sure. And so we felt like Buff City would be a playoff to Bluff City and it would also give us a uh, marketing fodder that that uh, forever. Uh because mm -hmm. there's just so many ways that you can play with the word buff. Well, and seeing the the way the logo design almost has an L, your your my my eyes tricked me. I thought that was an L in there somehow. So uh, <laughs> anyway, it's um, the branding is really well done, and and they do. Are you still with Paradigm as an agency? Well, not to not today. Uh, we worked with Charles up until last year uh, when I took a partner, and we uh, uh, now we have an in-house brand. So you're so at, you guys have sort of taken this idea, and instead of opening up you know, 150 stores yourselves, you sort of uh, applied a franchise model, um, as, as I understand it. So can you tell us a little bit about that? Oh, what a process. Uh, <laughs> I've learned so much in the last two years, three years. Um, at the time when we saw our company was growing, uh, I was, I guess, maybe 44, 45. If I'd have been in my 20s, I probably would have franchised. You know, I probably would have built it one at a time myself. But being my age, I felt like franchising was the way to expand uh, and to bring in the skill sets from a lot of people to help us really take buff to what it can be. Uh, so what I did when, when uh, I knew that we wanted to franchise, at that time we had about 20 locations. Uh, I was able to, to, to hire the law firm Baker Donaldson and between Baker Donaldson and a franchising consultant named Mike Saeed, Mike, Mike Saeed, uh, his first company was Supercuts. And so Mike wrote the book Franchising for Dummies. And he, Mike and his team helped us set our, flat, our, our foundation up to support uh, the growth that it was ex experiencing. Um, so, uh, I don't want to jump ahead too far, but how many, how many stores, how many Buff City soaps are there now? I think today they're 40. I think today they're 40. And uh, they're around the nation. Are there any international ones? We, we're working on, uh, uh, some locations in Seoul, Korea, uh, but we've not opened those yet. Uh, but we will be in, uh, an Asian market soon, but right now, we're, uh, we go as far west as Maricopa, Arizona, uh, and we're down in Naples, Florida, and we go as far north as Toledo. So, so let's just say that I am tired of my job running a museum here in Union City, and I want to open my own uh, Buff City Soap Union City. Uh, how does, what's the process like uh, for me as a person who maybe doesn't know a whole lot about soap yet? Uh, I think we're an excellent model for that. I tell, you, I tell you what we did, and it was inadvertent. We didn't mean to do this. It, it was just the lowest hanging fruit for our eyes and our skill set. The franchise model is full of food models and, and experience models. But like with a food model, 
at the end of the day, you have a lot of waste. Uh, you have to have the health department. You have to have a, ma a major investment in ovens and dinner hoods and grease traps and stuff like that. What we did with our model is we don't fall under the health department because we're not selling something that you eat. We do fall under the FDA and follow their guidelines, but our business model doesn't have waste. What you make today will actually be better tomorrow. You don't need to buy big ovens. You don't need to buy uh, expensive grease traps and vinegar hoods. Uh, we, we don't cook anything. Our cold process is a chemical reaction. So I think we're an excellent uh, business model for somebody ready to open their own business because of those elements. And those elements uh, inadvertently sort of broke a paradigm in the franchise uh, business. It's not like a, a subway or a restaurant. I mean, it is a whole different, it's a different skill set you have to have. It's, uh, and it, there's a lot of creativity that goes into it. I know that you guys do like birthday parties and, and things like that. Talk a little bit about, about what, what is, for people who've never been into one, what is a Buff City soap store like? I tell you, the easiest way to think about it is we're a bakery. We go from raw material to finished product right there under one roof, and it's all done by hand. So instead of making donuts, we make soap. <laughs> we use baker carts. Uh, it's just like a bakery. And, so, and sometimes people pick it up and eat it. It happens. <laughs> a lot, a lot, that's our, that, that was my, when we, about 2014, as I saw how we were trending, I wanted to have a blended genre. My idea was a body products cafe. I wanted you to see the ingredients. I wanted you to know that they wasn't made by animals, that they're all plant-based and natural. And so it lent itself to that bakery model for transparency. So when you walk into a bus city today, you see our soap makers creating your soap. You see our soap makers creating your bat bombs and your body butters. It, it, it's all out in the open so you can know what's going into it. And it smells really good. Yeah, we smell real good. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what kind of, uh, you know, here you were, you hit 40. You're a firefighter, you're living in Bar. I mean, sorry, you're a medic, you're living in Bartlett, and now you fast forward just a few years, and, you know, you're, you know, I'm not saying anything you can't Google and find out. I mean, your, your idea has been phenomenally successful, and you've uh, recently taken on a partner. Uh, what kind of advice do you have for people who are uh, in jobs that, you know, they're ready to turn the page and go to the next chapter? Uh, you clearly embrace the entrepreneurial spirit. Uh, what kind of advice do you have? What have you learned along the way that would be helpful? Focus. That's what I say. Uh, I got, I got, I, I'm going to tell a secret here. One of our mo mottos, if you go into uh, any Buff City anywhere and you ask an employee, what's the company motto? It's that we don't like candles. It, 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 because that's what people ask us every day. Why don't y'all make candles? Why don't y'all make candles? <laughs> well, our, our employees have a motto by candles, and I know this is probably a family show, so I'm going to be nice about it. <laughs> <laughs> but that's all. We chase the perfect soap. Our, candles be a distraction. I don't want to sell candles. I don't want to sell coffee cup. I want to make the perfect soap. And so my advice to anybody is choose your passion. It, it may be furniture. It could be uh, paint a house. But whatever you do, focus on that. Five guys don't sell turkey burger. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. If, if Charlie Burgo had started selling cheeseburgers in the 60s, we wouldn't have rendezvous today. Yeah. So pick what you're good at, focus on that, and go after the people that want your product. That's brandy. That's great advice. So everybody right now and in, in where we are in 2020, uh, of course, we're all dividing our time in pre-COVID and post-COVID. Uh, it certainly changed everybody's world. 
Um, do you anticipate uh, changes in the franchise retail soap business um, due to what's going on in our uh, culture today? I, I see COVID as a watershed moment, not just for our country, but for our lives. In the future, when you, when you reminisce, it's going to be before and after COVID. Uh, so we've actually redesigned, we kept our original um, ethos in the store, but we've cleaned our, uh, our trade dress. We want clean, simple, uh, um, safe for employees and customers, social distancing, uh, we wear masks. Uh, we're we're going to try to, we're not going to take uh, advice in our industry. We want to set the tone. Um, I really appreciate you being here, but I got one more question I need to ask you about. Let's talk about that tattoo. Oh, yeah, that one here? Yeah, that one there. I love that tattoo. <laughs> what, what made you want to get that? It's Snoopy. It's Snoopy. <laughs> And Snoopy, he, he got the Buff City logo on his shirt. Oh, that's amazing. What, <laughs> in, what inspired that? I tell you, uh, uh, the toughest job I ever had was CEO. I, I served as CEO for, I guess, five years. And see, I never knew that CEOs get up and you fight vendors. Uh, I mean, all day long is a fight. And so I was in Naples, Florida, at our store down there, and I, I, I'm always arguing than when I was a CEO. And so I went to a tattoo shop, and I said, I might be arguing on the outside, but I'm Joe Cool on the inside. <laughs> That's and, amazing. And so he put the Joe, the Joe Cool right there, and so anytime I get stressed, I look down and think about Joe Cool. So, so Joe Cool was able to take on a partner. So you're not CEO anymore. You're a consultant kind of a thing. I stepped aside as CEO in uh, November. Uh, uh, my title today is founder, and I get to make soap, which, like we were talking about, ago, is all I want to focus on. I want to focus on making soap. You give me a spreadsheet, I'll go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Well, I, I mean, I, for one, really celebrate your success and, you know, all the passion that went into the, it's really evident when you go in a store, you can really feel the passion and the love that, that went into the organization. So I'm going to be watching from afar and see all the great successes coming down the road. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening to Real Foot Forward. Be sure to like, subscribe, and leave us a review. Start planning your visit to Discovery Park of America by visiting discoveryparkofamerica.com. And also be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for the latest updates.